Alright guys, got a brand new video uh, coming to you guys today. Wasn't really going to do it, but I was talking to some friends and they wanted mom and me to do it. So I kind of said I was going to, but I was just going to be lazy and not do it. Decided to do it. So uh, at the end of the video, well actually I got voted out and they decided to do it. I'm going to have some shout outs per their request, word for word. So if those are a little inappropriate, whoop de doo um, So as you can see here, we have the Polish MUA gas mask, if I can pull it on camera here. Um, it's in a dark green, heavy fabric bag with um, some clips back here that I'm assuming this might have been for a waist strap of some sort but it also has belt loops to uh, attach it to your belt to keep it from swinging but best I can assume is that maybe this is to clip it to your belt uh, too because most pistol belts have holes in them and it's got a nice thin smooth uh, rugged fabric strap so that's good and then uh, basically it's a pretty plain bag but it's down at the point simple but uh, we have this fabric strap right here with a metal tab that is folded over and clamped on both sides that will pull up and out of this whole loop system right here which is a roller right here a lock on the bottom of the bag right there and that uh, clamps over this and then you slip the strap through both and pull it so inside here we're going to have the Polish MUA hose, which is slightly bigger than the Russian hoses, and it's a little bit thinner. So set that aside. Right here we have the Polish EO14 gas mask filter, which as you see that's a tad bit different than most other gas mask filters as well. Then obviously in the top pouch here we have the Polish MUA gas mask itself. So again, the bag is very high quality. It does have a name tag, but on this one I got shorted the paper and the plastic, but if I need one for some reason, I will just cut out a piece of paper and fold over a Ziploc bag over it. Cut out a strip of the Ziploc bag but right here. Get a good view of the uh, the bag. You see over here is where the hose is kept, the filter, and then the mask goes on this little top pocket. So that's basically about all there is to say about the bag. So not really going to worry about that. Now right here, again this is a rubber hose. It's not one of the fabric ones, and see it's been stored for a little while, so it's kind of bent into that shape naturally, but not a huge deal. And we're going to talk about the filter a little bit. So my filter's made in 1982, unlike the mask, which is made in, I believe, 95. Uh, yes, 95. And uh, so this filter's kind of dented up. Uh, really, probably can't even tell. And actually, yeah, you can, you can see, kind of see them. This one's pretty much dented all to hell, but whatever. So it's EO14 filter right here and right here is the Polish military inspection stamp that says 298. I know you can't see it but it's just whatever. And right here we have IX1982-9 then some sort of serial number CO223. Now as you can see this is kind of a strange design filter but it filters just as long as the Russian coffee can filter and longer and it's lighter. So which is a uh, it's pretty neat little uh, addition they have there. On the bottom here, we have an inlet so dirt doesn't get clogged up in the filter. You pull this cap off, you have the string that attaches it, and then in here, the Polish have vents going uh, like a triangle in there. So that it splits the air evenly on both sides of the filter, so the air instead of running down mainly one side will split down both the sides evenly and wear the filter at one time. And it has some nice black fabric, and there's other marks down on here, basically just squares with numbers in them, not really a huge uh, aficionado on Polish military markings. Then on the top we have another 08 marking on top of these two triangular humps. Then the cap threads off very cleanly and the rubber seal on these actually stays in. It doesn't fall off like a lot of other masks. Then inside here we have a normal, uh, well you probably can't see it too well, we have a normal grate style filter, not like the coffee camera that's a hole through it. But uh, again, I'm not going to be vouching for the safety of these filters because I am not 100% sure what might be in them. I know asbestos is a pretty common thing in the Soviet Union and all of its communist bloc countries. So let's get over here and do the mask a little bit. So you can see, uh, very similar to the GP5. I mean, very, very similar. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit this way so that, okay, here we go. So see, it's very similar to the GP5. Um, basically almost the exact same design besides the fact that this one uh, had the addition of a voice diaphragm on the front but uh, the mask is made out of a soft uh, creamy white colored color of what wow white color and uh, these are zinc 
uh, all the metal on this mask is not just steel and olive drab painted. It is uh, zinc covered in some sort of a coating. I'm not 100% sure what it may be. But uh, it has the long SCHM41M. I think that's right. Gas mask filter input. That's a lot longer and it's angled. So if you see if I set it flat here, it comes up and then angles back. But it's got a nice little voice diaphragm. It's really about all you need on these style masks. I mean, the GP6, really the voice diaphragm on that thing is kind of in the way. Which you still can't hear people great out of this, but I mean, so what? So I'll show you the inside here. Yeah, there we go. So here's the inside of the mask. As you see, it's the basic GP5 layout besides it's white and the filter whole assembly down here is that zinc color. And then you have the TSO tubes and uh, you have a little cup right here for the voice diaphragm. I'm not really sure if your nose is supposed to go in there or what, but um, the best I can assume when I'm doing it is you set your bottom lip in that and talk through it. But that's uh, pretty neat. And something I want to say about this mask is uh, I do have it. I bought it. I purchased it with this mask as a pack. I bought two. I asked him for one OM14, which I do have, and one MUA. So what I was going to say is most soldiers, when these masks came out in the Polish military, were issued the OM14, which had no voice diaphragm, was very, very similar to the Russian GP5 or SCHM41M, more similar to the SCHM41M, actually. Then this one was issued to tank crews and officers. It is strictly where this mask was issued. Or high ranking, you know, I mean, it's basically like with the MP4 series is... Uh, the officer would have the gray gas mask because it, it he would have the MP4 because it had a better voice diaphragm and it was different colored. Then everybody underneath his command would have the green MP4M. So it would be a little bit easier to tell people apart. So this would also be for squad leaders so that they can give commands better. And then uh, as you can see it kind of comes out and then goes flat, angles down. So it looks pretty, pretty badass. And then mine is a size 2. Well, I normally wear a size 3 but I wasn't going to argue, and I can still fit into these. It's just kind of more comfortable. But again, over here we have our marks. It says F202, and then the year 1995. So, uh, and then obviously on the bottom, you have the regular external uh, exhale valve paired along with the internal one, and then where the, the inhale valve. So here we go. We're going to filter, set this up here. Now the correct way to use this mask is to set it up with a filter and hose. So you thread this in just like that. So you have your hose hooked up. And I don't know if you can tell, it's a little bit longer than a normal GP5 hose. And then this gets threaded on okay, to the end of the hose, just like this. like that and to use it you would pop the cap so this is what your completed GP5 or geez MUA setup would look like you'd have the mask with a hose running to your EO14 filter and then obviously the filter would go inside the pocket in the bag where it has two wooden slips to keep it uh, suspended slightly above the fabric for ease of breathing this one doesn't have holes but um as you can tell this mask is uh well I mean actually um I'll, I'll go off on a little bit of a rant here well not really a rant but just, uh, some information the Russian GP5 kind of gets a notorious, and the SCHM41 get uh, notorious uh, reputations for just kind of being crappy gas masks in general. And um, in part that's true, but mostly where that's true is the fact that it, they really are featureless. And pretty much everybody has them and can get them easily and cheap. So uh, some other countries picked up and copied the design, such as Poland and also China. So the Chinese version, I do have a previous video on. Um, you can go back to my channel and check that out. It's the Chinese TF1. It looks uh, basically like this without the voice diaphragm. This is gray, gigantic eyepieces, and it's tan with a white hose and a small coffee can style filter that's blue. So that is basically, so here's the GP5. Then the TF1 steps up over that. Remember with the MUA, it's uh, much lighter actually than a normal mask. I'm not quite sure why uh, it's lighter in the GP5 in the TF1. And then uh, it has a voice diaphragm on it, obviously. And then it's a little bit lighter, nicer quality. And then basically you have GP5, TF1, MUA, way up here. Just quality-wise, I mean, just beautiful. 
So, uh, that's basically all I'm going to do about this mask. I mean, there's not really a whole bunch to show. Uh, so like I said, it's basically a featureless mask. But, uh, you're going to get a lot of, uh, well, not really a lot of accessories, but you're going to get quite a few pieces with it, simply because this mask was issued with, uh, multiple items. So, as you can see right here, the filter slides into its little pouch directly right here. Then the hose is, uh, folded like so and is put into the pouch directly across from the filter. And then the MUA gas mask itself is folded over. You wrap the rubber around the voice diaphragm to protect it and you put it in face side up. If it wants to fit here, yep. And then it's all packaged in there just like that. And then of course your flap goes over. Uh, this would be a good time to demonstrate this. Uh, if I can get my hands out of the way. So this little clip goes over the roller and then your strap gets tucked underneath and your bag is secured. Now, uh, I've been talking to a couple guys today. I promised uh, one of them a shout out. So his is going to come first. So this is a shout out to my good friend on here, Nazi Zombies 97 And he wanted me to say that he had, well, I think that he has pretty good videos and uh, I watch him a lot. They're pretty good. He's a good friend with me. And uh, something he also wanted to add on there is that he uh, enjoys rough anal sex with older black men. So, I mean, I thought that, that's a pretty important clue to his channel. Now, my next one is a guy I know on here, Tyler Listberger. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Um, that he is a massive alcoholic, and he plays with his nipples just an unhealthy amount. It's just not even cool. And then uh, Firebird JP, I've known that dude for quite a while. He's pretty pretty awesome. He's a good friend. And uh, he wanted me to say that he is a big fucking faggot, and he is an anal cunt, which I could not agree more with. So that's my video on the MUA. Had to give those shout outs, so thanks for watching.